Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna do something very interesting. We're gonna check out the statements and reactions from bodybuilders, especially the ones who lost at this year's Mr. Olympia. And we're gonna start first with Andrew Jacked, because I'm sure you guys saw his reaction after his posing routine. So apparently what happened is they played his song, but apparently it had too many profanities in it. However, the song before that one, Brandon Curry's song, had a, a bunch of profanities as well. But Andrew Jack started posing with his song and they had to change it because of the profanities, as Bob Chicarillo said. And so they changed the song, they played another song and he was trying to pose with that one, but then they changed it again and again. So he had three songs to pose to, and in the end he just uh, walked away from the stage, and it looked like he was angry, he was mad, and some people are saying that he was punished, that the reason he placed uh, so low, quote-unquote, fifth, was because he did this at his posing routine, and so let's check out what Andrew Jack himself has to say about this. So he says, firstly, just want to clarify that I didn't get angry and walked off stage during my routine, I just had to summarize and end it so that the show continues and not cause any delay. Secondly, three songs were played in a loop, which totally disorganized my rhythm, even after I tried wiping to the second song, and when the third came in, I just couldn't. And then he names the three songs that were played, and then he says, I just wasn't happy, I didn't get to perform and show you guys something spectacular, but I'll make it up to you guys, a sizzling and unimaginable performance for the Arnolds. Stay tuned. Also, thanking the MPC and Mr. Olympia for their total understanding. What do you guys think about this? Do you think he was actually angry? And that's why he walked away like this? Could have he just, you know, posed? without really being in, in sync, in rhythm, I think he could have, of course he was upset, come on guys, everybody would be upset, I would be upset, especially since Brandon Curry's song had even more profanities in it, and they didn't change that one, so, and he prepared a posing routine, a really good posing routine apparently, and he couldn't perform, so of course he was angry, of course he was mad, and of course he walked away from the stage. And also, of course, he will say that that's not the case. He is not going to admit that he is angry at a Mr. Olympia, at the MPC. He's being smart about it. He doesn't want to cause any trouble for himself. He can't really uh, call out those guys because he's competing in their league at their competition. He's going to be there next year and try to win it. So he needs to be politically correct. He can't show that he was angry, that he was mad. But I mean, of course he was. Who wouldn't be upset? Let's be real. Now, the other thing he says also, for those of you saying that I was being punished for not being an aggressive contender, I can't fake aggressiveness. I have always been a cool, calm, calculative, composed, concentrated person. And for walking off stage, nah, that isn't true. With this emoji, so I guess we can get a message. And he says, the show needed to continue and I wasn't punished for your information. Now, as far as that second part about him not being aggressive on stage, I completely agree with that. And he doesn't need to fake it. He needs to practice it the way he's practicing posing. It's not like bodybuilding posing is, is natural to him. It's not like he's hitting the front double bicep in his living room or when he's walking outside. He, he learned that. He practiced that. The same way he can practice aggressiveness on stage. Like, once he hits the pose, he needs to do it with some, with some life, you know, in it. Like, with, with some aggression. And, and that's going to cause the, the judges to pay attention to him more. Now, would that change the outcome? Mm, probably not. I don't know. But he did kind of look like he wasn't enjoying his time on stage. He did kind of look like he didn't want to be there. Really. I don't know if he really felt like that because he wasn't in the first callout, maybe. But even in the elimination round before the callouts, he was, he was the same. And he's always like that. And he gets away with it like at smaller shows where he's just better than everybody because he's a top 5 Olympian. But against the very top guys, you need to exert confidence. You need to exert aggression on that stage. You need to be alive on that stage. You need to be, you know, full of energy, stuff like that. You can't be like with that bored face, you know, hitting the poses so slowly, acting like you are tired and bored and you don't want to be there. That's something Andrew Jack must work on, he needs to work on his charisma, he has his sort of charisma, but he needs to show more aggression, more fire, more desire 
We need to see that he's enjoying his time on stage, that he wants to win, that he wants to beat the other guys. That's what he needs to show on stage. And it's not something he needs to fake. He needs to practice it. That's the way I see it, guys. And I don't think he was punished in terms of placing. I think he placed uh, exactly where he was supposed to place. But what happened at the posing routine was very unfortunate. You guys tell me down below, what do you think about this? All right, the next guy we're going to talk about is the, well, let's say the biggest loser at this whole show, I guess, Derek Lansford, because he lost his Mr. Olympia title. Now, he made a statement on his Instagram, and I have very little interest in that. It's all perfectly politically correct. It's a bunch of uh, Bible verses, and it's not really showing the way he truly felt. But there is an interview that MPC Online did with him, and there we can see some raw emotion from Derek. Let me play this for you guys, a short version. You can watch the whole interview at the MPC Online uh, YouTube channel. <sighs> Uh, you know, it's hard when you spend an entire year from one show to the next and, and, and you're in the gym training and you're working so hard to come back, so much improve that you slam the door shut and you really solidify yourself as the champion. Uh, and it wasn't to do it for anybody like that's like haters, so to speak, like that. Like, I, it was more for me. Like, I knew I could do better from last year to this year. And I seen some places where I improved and stuff, but I really wanted it to be like, wow, like come out, lights out, knock out, like just nobody's touching this guy. And for it to even be close and then and then drop into third, it was like, uh, it's just a shock, man. It's, well, we bring I'm probably just going to go to bed tonight, really. All right, so I definitely encourage you guys to go and watch the whole thing, but uh, yeah, Derek was very emotional here. It was just right after he came off the stage, Tony Doherty did this interview with him. It was a tough interview, very tough one, but he had to do it. And Derek, I mean, he, he, he almost started crying. I mean, he was he had teary eyes the whole time. Uh, he didn't feel happy. Like, he was, he was sad, man. What he says is interesting. Like, he was focused on improving his physique the entire year. He didn't do the Arnold Classic or the other shows. He was just focused on improving so much that when he shows up this year, he knocks everybody out. And it's not even close. He won last year controversially, a lot of people thought that he didn't deserve to win, so he wanted to prove that he is not a one-off, that, that his win was not a gift, and he worked on that, and he thinks he improved his physique in some areas, and not only that he didn't defend his title, but he fell all the way down to third, I mean, I'm sure he was shocked, I'm also pretty sure that he knew that before the finals, I'm sure Honey Rambert spoke to the judges, and he kind of knew what was going on, so I'm sure he told him to not expect the win, but after the pre-judging, that was probably where he was realizing that he's not going to win again, but then when he placed third, I'm sure it was a horrible shock for him, and this whole interview, you can see, he, you, can, you can feel his emotions, and even though he is not the most likable person, I mean, let's be real, let's be honest, like, a lot of people don't like him that much, after watching this interview, I kind of felt for him, you know, I, I really felt sorry for Derek, and I liked seeing him being real, you know, at this moment right here, he couldn't fake things too much, a little bit, yeah, but, like, overall, he had to be exactly the way he was, and it was sad, disappointed, shocked, overwhelmed, and I'm sure he felt a whole bunch of other emotions as well. So, yeah, not a good moment for Derek Lansford. What he could have done differently is maybe come in in better condition. That was probably the number one thing, uh, number one reason why he plays so low. Last year, he was a lot sharper. And of course, other than conditioning and details, he needs to work on bringing his legs up and maybe letting his back relax a little, maybe even downsize a little because it's making the rest of his physique uh, kind of look small in comparison to his back. So, yeah. I think he was judged correctly, I think that's exactly where he deserves to be, at least this year, but I'm also sure he didn't expect that, I'm pretty sure he actually believed the entire year that he's going to win again, and this time around win convincingly, but yeah, he fell all the way down to third. Now the next guy is Sean Clarida, the thing with Sean Clarida is uh, he plays second, and that was the best possible outcome for him. He could not have beaten Keon Pearson, no matter what he did, basically. If he was even 10, 15% better than Keon Pearson, he would not have beaten him. I mean, he is a little bit too much. He is undeniable in 212. Keon is just very, very dominant. 
And uh, Sean didn't play slower than second. Like, he wasn't beaten by Angel Calderon or Carrie Baggio, but, but he was not the best version of himself. You know, he let down a lot of people. A lot of people said that he was way off. I think he was completely off. I think he was so much downsized, so flat. He looked the way he looked five years ago or even more. And a lot of people are blaming that on Matt Jansen. But Sean Clarida is a class act. As always, he never really responds to any drama, so I'm not gonna even bother reading his uh, his uh, his statement here. He didn't say anything interesting, really. He's just you know grateful for where he is. He thanks everybody. Uh, somebody in the comments said uh, drop Matt Jansen. He didn't comment on that. He didn't leave the comment either. I don't know if he even read it. Uh, probably not. Uh, so yeah, nothing special from Sean Clarida. Now, as far as Wesley Wizards, he is also one of the bigger losers at this show because people actually thought he was gonna give Chris a run for his money, play second or at least third. However, he placed all the way down to eight. He was beaten by everybody, basically, who he beat at the Arnold Classic, plus Michael the Bull even beat him. So, not a very good outcome for Wesley. So, I'm sure he was extremely disappointed. He didn't really show it that much in this post, but he says... Man, this morning's show was intense, I really gave it my all, but I can't lie, I feel some disappointment. After coming off a high from winning my last competition, it's tough not to feel that way. But hey, I'm not the one to dwell on it too long, I'm already looking forward to what's next. I did really want to get compared uh, with the other top guys this time, but didn't get my shot uh, in the middle of the callout. It's still my dream to get an opportunity, no matter what though, I'll bring my best to the finals tonight. Huge thanks to uh, all of you who supported me. So, this was after the pre-judging, he didn't get uh, compared to the top guys, he did end up in that uh, top 8 at least, but yeah, still, very disappointing. Next up, we got uh, Hari Chupan. Now, Hari also did an interview with NPC News Online after the show, but, you know, it was uh, Hein Rambert who was translating, and it was also, like, all politically correct, it wasn't anything uh, spectacular, uh, we didn't really hear Hari, you know, speak because he doesn't speak English, so I don't know what he said, what he felt, but he posted this story today. It's a photo of himself holding a sandal, tagging the Mr. Olympia and saying, I am. What is this? What does this mean? Is he saying that he thinks he is the Mr. Olympia, even though he didn't win? Maybe he feels like he was the rightful winner. <laughs> I'm probably just looking into it uh, too much. Maybe he's just saying I am the Mr. Olympia because I won it that one year, and which means I'm a, a Mr. Olympia forever. Maybe not the current one, but in the history books, he is one of the Mr. Olympias. And he also posted this uh, post, and it's all written in Farsi, of course. But of course, Instagram has the option of translating this, this text, and it's like... The whole text is, it, it's kind of confusing because it's a, it's a raw translation, it's probably not very accurate, but there is this one part when he says, I am ashamed. And he's addressing his home country and like his fans and this and that, and he's talking a lot about uh, God and family and this and that, but, you know, basically, yeah, I'm sure he, he feels ashamed because there is a whole bunch of pressure on him because his whole country is really passionately cheering for him. They actually made a statue of him after he won the Mr. Olympia two years ago. And the, the welcoming that he gets when he gets back home, it's crazy. It's one of the craziest. Him and Big Ramis are, are really crazy. Uh, so yeah, he didn't win. He placed second. Did I see it that way? Did I think he deserved to be second? Not after the pre-judging based on the live stream, but after seeing the photos and the videos, yeah, I absolutely see it. Could have he beaten Samson? Maybe. If he was in his Arnold Classic condition, but he failed with conditioning, especially from behind, like the back, especially the back, you know, it was very watery, and like the glutes and the hamstrings weren't as dug out, so yeah, I think he didn't deserve to win. And the way he feels about it is, uh, you know, he's ashamed, that's what he's saying here. And as far as the winners of this show, it's pointless to show their reactions, but I wanted to show you this one, because I thought this was very interesting. You guys probably remember that after Hadi won the Arnold Classic Ohio and UK against Samson Dauda, he did this exact same thing to Samson. He lifted him up and, you know, spin him around in circle, and uh, Samson, as soon as he got the opportunity to do the same thing to Hadi, he did it, man. He lifted him up, and he did the same thing to him. Now, I don't think Samson did this out of spite, 
you know, as a vengeance. I don't think he took what Hari did uh, as, as disrespect or as humiliation, as some of you guys think in the comment sections. I've seen that a lot. But, you know, he probably felt genuinely super happy, exactly the way Hari felt. And he wanted to congratulate Hari because he likes the guy. And that's all. But I just still love to see Samson do that to him now after Hari did it to him twice. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Tell me what do you think about this guy's reaction. If you enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up. And for more bodybuilding content like this, guys, stay tuned. Subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best. And bye-bye.